Today is Thursday, April 2nd. Go ahead and find your packet week one. We're going to be working on the reading passage. Today's objective is students will be able to complete passage, biotic and abiotic components of an ecosystem. Students will answer questions one through five with annotations and evidence. Students will complete open-ended response using three to five sentences. And before we begin reading our passage, we're going to go over the key points for today. The key points for today. Organisms interact with both living and non-living things to survive in their ecosystems. Are organisms any living thing that grows and reproduces? Yes. Organisms are living things that may grow and reproduce. Number three. Are not living things, things such as rocks, water, and air? Yes, these are examples of non-living things. Do they need to grow and reproduce? No, non-living things do not need to grow and reproduce. We have the first picture here. We see a tree, flowers, bird. We see lion, bear, turtle, and other living things. Are they considered living because they may grow and reproduce? Yes, all of these living things, they require energy so they can grow. The examples of non-living things, I see the water, sun, air, rocks. Do they need energy to grow? No, these non-living things do not require energy in order to grow or reproduce. They cannot grow and they cannot reproduce. How do living and non-living things interact? Here we have a pond ecosystem. We can see here that there are many animals, many plants, and we can see some non-living things as well. But how do they interact? An example of a living organism interacting with another living organism is the turtle resting on the log. The turtle is considered living, the log is considered living, and the turtle needs that log so they can rest. Number two, ladybugs interact with plants for food. The lady plant is interacting with the plant by searching food between the leaves. Now, living with non-living. Deer interact with water by drinking it. The number two says fish interact them with water because water is their habitat. There are more examples. Now I want you to pause the video and in your paper, write two more examples of interactions. One that is living with the living and another one that is living with non-living. Now we're gonna read our passage. While you read, I want you to do two things. Number one, write the main idea of each paragraph. Number two, circle important keywords. And if you see the definition, go ahead and underline it. Let's go ahead and read. An ecosystem is a biological community. It is made of all the living and non-living things in a specific setting. In an ecosystem, living organisms interact with each other and with the physical environment. In order to understand the interactions in an ecosystem, we need to understand biotic, living, and abiotic, non-living factors. Go ahead and pause the video and write the main idea. Remember to circle important keywords. Paragraph two. All of the living organisms in an ecosystem are called biotic factors. This includes animals, bacteria, plants, and fungi, even organisms that have died, such as dead animals or decaying trees, are considered biotic components in an ecosystem. Fossil remains of animals like bones or fossil fuels are even considered living components. Abiotic factors are all of the non-living things in an ecosystem. Soil just the dirt, not the recycled nutrients, the sun, temperature, air, water, are some abiotic factors. 
Abiotic factors do not grow or reproduce. The biotic and abiotic factors in an ecosystem are closely linked together. Any change in an abiotic factor affects biotic factors. For example, if there is a drought and the water in a pond dries up, the fish in the pond will most likely die. The aquatic plants will also die. The change in the water level of the pond impacted the pond life in the ecosystem. Now pause your video and write the main idea of, of this paragraph and circle important words. Paragraph three, let's look at plants. Living plants use water, sunlight, and carbon dioxide to make food. What if the abiotic elements were missing? The plants could not make food. They would not be able to grow. Other abiotic factors affect plants. When the temperature is low, the plant slows down. It cannot make food as quickly. When the sky is cloudy, there is less sunlight available. The plant can't make as much food as it can on a sunny day. The amount of pollution in the air can slow down the plant's food making process. Pause the video, write your main idea, and circle important words. Paragraph four, abiotic elements affect animals in an ecosystem. Winter approaches, temperatures drop and the weather gets colder. The snow begins to fall. This is a signal to many animals to grow a warm winter coat. This coat insulates the animal so that it can stay warm. Some rabbits and foxes have coats that turn white. This helps them hide from predators. Paragraph five, look around you. If you observe carefully, you can find many examples of abiotic and biotic elements interacting. Now pause the video, write the main idea, and circle important words. What's next? Answer your multiple choice questions one through five. Annotate each question and explain why you chose that answer. Remember to write your how do you know. Also, you need to complete the writing prompt using three to five sentences. After you complete your packet assignment, you will work on the online assignment. Go to General tab, click on Assignment April 2nd, Science Reading Passage, complete it and submit it. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your Thursday.